Episode 4, True Warrior. Thor's about to kick all the grasses without shedding any blood. Well, we're not killing anyone. It's time for Thor's Clinic. I asked Glad just a little bit too smug, speaking of cocky. He'll be alright. All these guys are so lucky. <laughs> they have no idea. Well, maybe they do. If they didn't know, now they know. Through the shield, no less. Did he just throw them that ore? <laughs> it's so satisfying. It's so rewarding. What is he morphing into his final form? Oh, is this Mushroom Dude? <laughs> okay. He'll have interesting dreams. Oh, this is Mushroom Dude. He didn't get knocked out yet. This is radically different from my Mushroom experience. <laughs> Point him at Thor's. We're putting him at this block of wood. A true worthy adversary. Adversary. What is a berserker mushroom? It would have been so great if you took him out with one punch. <laughs> I feel like that guy's per Oh, what? He's still around? I was going to say his purpose was just to introduce the concept of berserker mushrooms. But he's still going. They're going to be sold. That may have saved their lives for now. Also, it gives them a back door. I gotta reread the Art of War, but that was one of the, the tenets that stuck with me the longest. The idea that the enemy will fight twice as hard if they think there's no way out or no escape. This is not an escape exactly, but it's not death. They might think twice. It's pretty amazing how even idle thoughts can change the whole emotional dynamic and how much strength with which you can act. And I think that idea actually can be manipulated at a personal level where it's like, you just don't give yourself any other option but the thing you, you want to do. Not even in terms of circumstance, because, you know, it's not a good idea to burn bridges in the intent to push yourself to do something, but just in terms of a, like a, a, a mental commitment or some kind of habitual thinking, you know, kind of dispense with certain ideas like I had been doing YouTube for a while before anything came of it but it was corona and like losing my prospects of teaching in Japan that kind of made me decide to go full into it although being captured is not exactly a way out especially with their their village's background and history at least conceptually they might even prefer death <laughs> he's so happy he's so gleeful yeah, me too this is everything you want to see. And this guy's been living amongst them this whole time. They had no idea. Speaking of giving your enemies a way out, <laughs> Thor is... Thor is the one who kills or captures. But Asclad is a little bit too confident. I feel like this is not the full plan. Oh, he's literally the guy from the intro. File this under categories of things I probably shouldn't talk about, but well, anyway. I've had very, very different experiences with mushrooms than this. It's hard for me to even conceptualize it. Mushrooms are sort of weird in the sense that they can be a lot of different things. I guess it's more of like an enhancer of your, your state. That guy just probably is a maniac berserker already. <laughs> Interesting little trivia for those who've been following the channel long enough to know what Fruit Saga is. If you guys remember the, the Cosmo Cactus scene with Cabbage Bro. <laughs> it's going to be no surprise, I guess, when I say this out loud, but that was on the heels of a very interesting mushroom experience, and in some sense is autobiographical. <laughs> I mean, that's what it means to me. I don't know. I can't imagine what Viking experience would be with that, like being in war. Then again, I think one of the interesting effects of psychedelics in general is like increased pattern recognition. Maybe that would be somehow useful in fighting. I'm, I'm trying to wrap my mind around this. <laughs> you know, you can focus or sort of get past your, your natural mind state to recognize things as they happen. Hard to say, but I don't think it would lead to this like insane berserker behavior where you're smashing your head against poles, etc. Right, they also got the archers. But Thor's, I mean, he knows that. Okay, Obi-Wan. It doesn't seem like he's struggling at all. He's done this good this far. And I got my boy. Right, right. Diplomacy? Found the leader. <laughs> this all depends on Ask Lad's character. He's the most common, least impressed, and also his, his odor. Wow. His confidence sort of bugs me out, though. He just watched this whole demonstration and still accepted. Seems a little bit too good to be true for those to just kick his ass and then, you know, walk away. Wow, very, very astute, yeah. 
He just gets in front. Thor is also at a disadvantage because he doesn't want to kill. I don't think Asklad cares. Oh, wow. What is he putting in all this one strike? What in the what? One of Thor's passive stats is able to take damage without affecting performance. He's just looking for a challenge. <laughs> Damn. Oof. Nice. This has got to feel so good. To be on Thor's side. Yeah, it only takes one mistake. One moment. Ah, I'm so on edge. He's gonna break his sword. Whose sword broke? Whoa. Did Thor see all that coming? Wow. Did you just plan that whole thing? Do you guys have any friends or like know anyone who just can't miss? Like every time you think they're about to lose, they, they pull something out of the bag. I have a friend like that and I know just how good it feels to witness it. It feels almost impossible. That's the, the vicarious feeling I'm getting from the villagers watching Thor's. And obviously talent and ability is involved, but I think it also comes back to something like what I was saying earlier about just not having a, an out. There are a lot of times where I feel like I'm about to lose and I, I start to rationalize it already. You know, I start to think that it won't be so bad or whatever. I start to kind of find reasons why. Like I'm already searching for excuses even before things have been lost. And I think people like that, they just don't. They just don't have any, any time or space for that. It means too much to them. And I wonder how much practice is involved. You know, like the more I think about it, the more I think that despite all of our, our thoughts and rationalizations appearing logical or feeling logical, I think a lot of mental reality is just based on practice. Because the truth is we just don't know how things will turn out and we don't know outcomes and we don't even know what our full potential is in a lot, in a lot of cases. It's hard to even imagine, but I wonder what it would be like to practice a state where you never entertain doing less than you could. I can't help but think that that would maximize whatever chances of success you, you did have in any any given moment or any given situation. I think Thor's probably is at a level where it just means way too much for him. So it's not even just the ability, it's also just his focus and his, his commitment. You know, I think people who always make things work and, and defy the odds, probably you're going to find that it just means too much to them to either win or to not lose. And it's not something that they just discovered in a certain moment. It's probably a way they practice and condition themselves to think whether or not it's totally a conscious thing they're doing. He seems so relaxed. Is he going to honor his agreement though? Something about Asklad. How much does he care about Odin's good name? <laughs> My guess is that Thor's would kill him if push came to shove. That's what it took. He would. I don't think he sees himself as worthy or worth saving on a soul level. But his kids and his men on the other hand. But I mean it would be huge if he didn't. But then what do you do instead? What I miss. <laughs> also, that mushroom more up real quick. I don't think who would understand. <laughs> Damn. And he has so much weight in what he says, considering what he just did. It would have no credit if he, you know, was defeated or on his knees. <laughs> Eh, well, sure, why not? We'll tie our boats together. Wait, wait. Okay, oof. I thought he was gonna stab him there for a second. Or get shot in the back. See, he's just like this. He's just like this. Oh no, oh no, oh no. What were they doing? He's got paralyzed? Not really. It's hard to be good in this world. It just ends up being a weakness for people who refuse to respect that. Play a similar game. I don't, I don't know if that's going to do it. I don't think that's going to do it. I don't think he cares. Why? 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 You can be peaceful with a sword in your hand. This is a huge gamble. Is that a, sig a sign? Is that a signal? Oh no! 
Oh no! Why? 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 He knew. I don't think this is a normal flesh wound. I don't think he's shrugging this one off. <laughs> he's, so ca just, he's so casual. I, he'll do whatever he wants to do. He's, he's already broken his word once. Why would you trust him to follow his word from here on out? <laughs> he's thinking about his people even in his last, last moments. Someone grab him. Okay, well, we'll get this. Allow this hug. We'll allow it. We needed more time. Ah, oh, it's infuriating and heartbreaking. No, no. Ugh. For a moment, I thought we might actually get out of this alive. I'm stunned, not just at his death, but at the way it went down. It's hard to unpack because I'm not even sure we're out of the woods yet. Like, I really just do not trust the Ask Lad character or any of his men. But assuming this wager works out, it's pretty unbelievable to me that he stuck to his ideals in that that capacity, to that extent. I mean, I knew he would be willing to sacrifice his life, but I thought he had kind of given up on himself and would be willing to sacrifice his life and the no-killing value for his men. It's really hard for me to unpack this idea just because it's on a level that I don't exist in. This pure commitment to ideals. My gut sense is that this is right, that this is the only thing that works when, when widespread. The refusal to do wrong no matter what you think the outcome will be. But that's a very hard place to live and I think unless you're really all the way there in this kind of enlightened state, you're gonna regret that at some point. You're gonna wish you didn't do that because I think the way this would play out in other situations is that he would do this and actually the villagers and his son would be harmed. And I'm not totally convinced that's not what's gonna happen. I actually think the one saving grace in this situation is not that Ask Lad gave his word, but that he accomplished his objective and that's sort of what he's after and the rest are sort of not worth it to him it doesn't seem like he's motivated by honor at all and also like i want burst to live you know I, that's selfish but his death just hurts and it hurts watching thorfinn watching his father die like that and he's not going to be able to understand the only hope and i think a lot of the beauty in it is that knowing that thorfinn will survive this encounter and grow up. He gave him like one shining beacon against the rest of the world that is set out to just kill everything and engage in, in ruthless violence and bloodshed that might end up saving Thorfinn in a different way. Even, even though he's probably going to struggle with that for a really long time until he, he ends up coming back around to it and understanding what his father meant. And this actually, this encounter at, at first will probably push him in completely the wrong direction. It's going to make him bloodthirsty and, and vengeful. He's not going to understand his father's sacrifice. He's going to think his father made a mistake because he's dead and the agony and tragedy of that. What good is Thor's ideals if he's dead and not around when I need him is you know, probably something that he'll he'll think much later, way later, he'll probably get it. I, I don't know. I mentioned Thor's not missing. I'll put my faith in, in his vision. It's so hard, man. It's so hard because a lot of times the ideals you have, they're not really put against the full gravity of things that could happen. One, and a lot of times they're not really ideals. They're a mask for, you know, being afraid of doing stuff. And later when it actually gets challenged and you see the results of, of things, you know, things you've passed up where you deep down long to actually win or get some kind of victory and now have suffered a circumstantial loss or made a sacrifice that you, you actually really coveted, that's going to eat you up. You know, it'll eat you up, at least at first, thinking that you put yourself in that situation, that you chose it. There's just so much temptation in that for most people. Thor's, I guess, is just, he's ascended to a different level. He understands the cycle. It's a really strong moment, even though it's its so, it's so tricky. I think I underestimated his conviction. Yeah, it's going to take him a really long time. It's unfair. I feel like some people never would recover from something like that. That would just be it. We hitched a ride? No, that was intentional. I mean, this might change Askeladd's life too. Where does he even end up now? Where does he even, does he even, he might even end up in Asklad's crew. Asklad is changed. He's different. Thor's was right. No, he's gonna take pity on him and spare him.
No one did a head count. Leaf just <laughs> didn't notice that he was gone. He did such a great job <laughs> throwing away. Man, that episode hurts. I feel so like empty thinking that Thor's is gone. I was also kind of relying on him. <laughs> <laughs> it's such an insane episode and I have just so many mixed feelings like you want to see him just crush them You know, they're all aggressors, right? It's not like it would be innocent people dying and ride out of there with his crew intact On the other hand, he closed his arc in a way, you know, he died with honor He saved the people he wanted to save without doing anything that he felt was wrong He lived up to his word There would have been something hypocritical about what he was hoping for his son If he himself was willing to kill other people and saw them as his enemies, etc It cost him his life, but he transcended his world and ended with something like freedom, you know, freedom of character the type of freedom that Eren can only dream of, and probably peace. He died as what everyone believed him to be, which is an ultimate warrior and man, and matching his own image and his own words, that a true warrior doesn't need a sword, which makes his death all the more painful. You know, it's this, it's this bittersweet thing. But like other characters in the past, it's not necessarily a tragic death. There's something heroic about it. It's on his own terms, and the things he values the most were maintained. His life was of lesser value than, than what he obtained, which is, it's hard to understand. You know, it's hard to understand as an observer. It's hard to fully feel. It's hard not to feel frustrated on some level that someone like that got taken out by people like that. I do think that this will mean more and will be more emotionally impactful when in however many years it takes, however many decades it takes, Thorfinn is able to understand this. And we can actually see that this was more than just a spiritual victory for Thor's, it will have a real impact in the world. It being the case, in my belief at least, that following ideals, if done right, if connected to something objective or of life in connection to the universe, is also the optimal thing for circumstance, even if it's impossible to trace, even if it takes a really long time to, to realize, even if it's a really difficult battle. The right ideals, properly conceived, will have a connection to the objective structure of the world and what is best for life, even if it comes at short-term sacrifice. In fact, I think that might be what causes conflict and morality. There's different levels of survival, you know, there's different levels of conceptualizing progress. There's the short term and the long term. And sometimes what gives the small, you know, the node, the greatest chance of success is counterproductive towards the whole. And so we'll never quite be able to pin it down or get exactly there. But I believe that what is optimal for fostering the inherent potential in, in people and in the universe and preserving that and respecting it is going to inform what is moral at an individual moment to moment level. And that in some cases means immense sacrifice, being connected to that grand picture rather than to one's own benefit even if that benefit is survival. It's it's tough. Like, I think that's why it's in the realm of kind of this enlightenment. You know, people who, who will forgive anything in religious fables and in hero stories, that probably contains an answer. It's just a very difficult thing to live. Thor's time was always going to come to an end, but the world goes on, and I feel like his legacy will live. The seed has been planted. It's very cliche to say, but, you know, speaking of Mufasa, he's died, but he will live on through Thorfinn and all of the men that witnessed this. They're forever going to be changed as a result of this, if they're paying attention, you know, if they're open enough. This this is a tragedy that plants the seed for a victory, I think. I believe that Thor's will be validated through the course of the show. There's just going to be a lot of tragedy and a lot of blood on the way there. <laughs>